Today's video, we're going to show you how to make a beautiful edge grain cutting board with just using a jig and a circular saw. Can it be done? Again, this is edge grain. Obviously, it can be done. We've already made it. Stay tuned and watch the video. If you have any comments or things we could have done better, be sure to post those as well. Now, before I get started with the actual build of the video, I want to show you the final revision, at least for now, of the actual jig because it's changed quite a bit from the video. The concept's still the same, but we've added some things and made it a little bit better. So it does look different. I didn't want to remake the video. I already made it and it was kind of too late at that point. So check this out. Now you can watch the video for the general instructions, but this is what we end up with, which is, it's different. Some things that I've done is when you watch the video, you'll notice the sides are a little bit taller uh, for like three quarter inch stock. Well, you may have thinner stock. Now you can take these off completely but for now I've got half inch sides on there and we'll show you how it works. This acts as a clamp. So in the video I had some, what I thought was three quarter inch thick material wasn't quite that thick and I had to actually shim it up. So now we've got these knobs we've added that makes it easier. In the video I had some screws and you could do it that way as well, but this is just makes it a little bit faster. Also, we had a support piece over here that was kind of stabilizing things because my saw is the six and a half version of the Milwaukee and the blades on the left hand side. Most of the time it's on the right. And for some reason I was basing everything off of this side, which you can see there's only an inch and a half of base there. So I had to have this other side, which in the video I've got it cutting this way. Well, I got to thinking, why don't I do it the other way? So I can eliminate this other piece, which just didn't really work out that well because the saw was still a little bit unstable. Although we did make the cutting board with no issues. Some other revisions, I actually added screws to everything. I originally just had some air nails, but we added some screws for stability. Now the way this works, this acts as a clamp. I do have two of these, I just don't have the other one in. And we slide our material, this is Purple Heart. slide it into place and you'll notice over here I have a stop. I'm gonna pop it up. When I assembled this, this is all 90 degrees so we know this is a straight cut. Now the stop you can change the location. So right now we're looking at a one inch cut. Now if I wanted to make a larger cut or a thicker board I can move this out to one and a half. You can unscrew it, put it in a new location. You could also add some slots to make it adjustable however you want to do it. If you wanted it smaller you could move it in a bit. So we put it in there, there's our stop, and then we would tighten down our clamps. And you want to put even pressure, because you see right now this is angled, because I've only got the one in there, but if I have them both in there, I can get even pressure. I just want to show you what actually happens. So now that I've got that clamp down, this piece of purple heart is not going to move. So we've got our piece secured in there. Now we could actually take the saw, we could rip our piece. See it's really stable now because we're using the majority of the base. I don't know why I didn't think of that but hey that's what trial and error are for. And I cut my one piece and you'll see that in the video on the unrevised version. We'll cut our piece, unclamp this, and then we move it over to make our next cut. And that's really it. I mean, it's a lot simpler now than I made it in the video because again, it was this way, it was kind of just weird. You couldn't actually see this piece. This piece kind of clamped down as well. And then once you cut it, you had to undo this section as well as this section to remove the piece or get a new piece in. This just makes it a lot faster. Clamp it down, cut it, push it in, clamp it down, and you're, you're rocking and rolling. It's pretty straightforward. If you have a saw with the blade on the right hand side, you're going to want to make it the way I originally had it and cut it that way uh, so you have more stability. That way you don't need that other piece. You can also see what you're cutting. To get the size you want, when you make your first cut, you don't really want to cut into this base too much, just a little bit, but you can actually measure from that kerf to the block to get what size you want. So you'll see that little kerf cut, if you wanted it an inch and a half unscrew it, measure over an inch and a half, make sure it's square, screw it back down. Now here's our top half. We use these quarter inch 
inserts. Again, you could just use screws like I do in the video. That's just fine. It takes a little bit more time. And then here is our piece of stock. Put that on there. This clamps it down, prevents it from moving, and you just start cutting. I wanted to go over those changes real quick before you watch the video and think this guy's an idiot, although you still may think that. I appreciate any comments, anything you think we could do to revise this. Now, I may not use this again. It was just an idea that I came up with. It is slower than cutting it on the table saw, but it's an option. When there's a will, there's a way, and that's what this is about. Uh, creativity, doesn't matter what tools you have. A beautiful cutting board in the end, in my opinion. Turned out really well. And nobody would ever know that this was cut with a circular saw. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what size cutting boards we need to make. The most common size, or what they call a medium, would be a 10 by 16. 10 inches wide, 16 inches long or deep, whatever you want to say. So that's the number we're worried about, the 16. The 10 doesn't matter. That's all about glue up. I'm not going to do anything with this jig. So we need to figure out what size we have here. We actually have two matching pieces. So 17 and a quarter. So after I put some of my sides on, we'll be a little bit under 16, which is fine. That's, that's perfectly okay. I'm going to use this piece as my bottom, and this will be my top. Now I need to make like a track for this. So what I'm going to do is turn my circular saw into somewhat of a track saw, basically. First thing I want to do is I can either line it up, or I'm just going to take a quick measurement from the cutting edge to the actual edge. And we are just over an inch, so an inch and an eighth. We're going to make an inch and a quarter. We're going to put our little piece here, which is also, I, something I cut must have been 17 and a quarter. I don't know what it is, but we're going to make an inch and a quarter. This is going to be our track. We're going to square this up. And then we'll make a cut. I'm making it a little bit bigger just to make sure it's square. Now you can screw these in, you can glue them in. We're just going to use our cheapo Ryobi stapler. So this is the beginning of our track. Now this, you can use this kind of track for anything. It's a quick little easy track saw basically. So I'm going to just rip along that edge to make sure that I've got it square. Now, So there is our track. I obviously need a new blade. But now we've got our perfect track and we can start kind of assembling the system already. Okay, we've got our track. And then we've got our base. We also have these little strips. Now I did cut these on the table saw, but they were already 17 and a quarter. Uh, kind of working out perfect for me. May not be the case with you. The size of these are very important. I've made these a little bit under three quarter. So basically, you don't want to make these too big or too small. You make them too big, this whole setup's not going to work. Let's assume you're just buying wood from the local Home Depot or Woodcraft. It's all sided. You don't have to plane anything because again, this is just with the circular saw. You're not going to be using a planer. So we made these three quarter. Now these are going to sit in here like this, but we're not going to put them on the base yet. We're actually going to put them on our rip fence or our track. Okay, I found some other scraps. That should work fine. So again, we still do not have the bottom attached. We're not going to do that quite yet. But the next important thing is how thick do you want your cutting boards to be? So we've got a piece of cherry here. And you'll kind of see what I'm doing in a moment. So we got some cherry. Do we want a one inch thick cutting board? Do we want a three quarter? I would say one to one and a quarter. You're not going to be planing, so we should probably leave it at one inch. So we're going to put a little support piece here. And we want to actually make sure this is square. But first we're going to measure basically an inch over. Square. Tack it and point it. Now the next thing I want to do is I need something else over here to help support the saw from keeping it tilting. So it's going to be hard 
to keep this, and we're going to end up cutting through that, but to keep this from tilting this way. So we do need another support piece on the other side. And we're going to find that. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Is that the right side? Oh my gosh. That may work out perfect. I think we're going to roll with that. Holy crap. That's going to be absolutely exactly what we need. That's unbelievable. What we're going for is here. You can see now I've got supports on both sides. We can cut our, our small pieces. Put that all back into place. We're not going to screw this down just yet. We are actually going to use screws on this bottom portion. But the first thing I want to do so I want to build some little little cleats, and of course I'm not going to build them. I'm going to find, need a, let's cut this one in half. I promise you, we're almost done. So there's our feet. Now we got to grab some screws and a drill. So unfortunately, you will need a drill for this. But most of you should have a drill if you already have a circular saw. At least I hope. We're going to put two screws on each end. This is the tricky part. At least, in theory, this should work. Let's find out. I drilled a small hole to prevent splitting of the actual the side piece here. In the big hole, you'll figure out what it's for in just a moment. Okay. Now we are cooking with steam. Hopefully now this is all making a little bit of sense. Probably not. Because we are just doing this up by the seat of our pants, pretty much. So basically, what we've done is we've created... This, is, this whole base acts as a clamp. So if you get a piece that's a little bit over three quarters or under, we cut this a little bit smaller than three quarters. We're good to go. So what we can do, this is a piece of uh, cherry. We can actually slide it through. Ah, that wasn't all the way down. Actually, this would be good. <laughs> be good for you to see this. Uh, now this is square. This is square to this. That's all that really matters. The ends, not so much, unless you're squaring it up to that. But we're going to square it up to this right here. We're going to make our cuts. I'm going to put this back on here. There's now that I think about it, I probably could have done this a different way, but this is going to be just for our leverage. We're going to cut our first strip. Now hopefully, we have a nice clean strip under here. There's one. Let's push it over. And I actually did not support that in the right spot. I should have put some nails under there. I did not do that. And I'm kind of glad that came off because I'm going to use this as a temporary support. I th now we're ready for our next piece. Now this is going to be the last piece we can cut on this. Push that down. of our edge grain cut so far and they are perfectly dead even actually and we can keep on keeping on we're actually going to cut some more let's find some other pieces of something now this is certainly not as I mentioned not the quickest way to do this I mean this this takes some time but you don't have the means to do the other things. Now this one's a little bit less than three quarters, quite a bit less. I should have made this a lot smaller. 
What you can do is you could take a slither or a scrap. Okay, we just need a little shaving here. I'm gonna put that in there. That'll give us our clamping pressure, hopefully. Yeah, that's, that'll give us our clamping pressure, and it does. We're gonna try it without that other side. I don't have a lot of confidence in my actual circular saw skills, but let's, uh, let's try it. Hey, what do you know? We got another edge grain piece. So let's, uh, this is going to be our last piece. Let's see how she goes. Oh, good lord, it stinks. Oh my gosh, it's actually straight. The other piece of Purple Heart I'm going to leave for another cutting board because that's a good piece of wood there. I'm surprised that blade actually cut as well as it did. It's pretty old, but hey, we'll take it. One thing I don't like about this method is the mess. I'm used to very little, very little dust with all the products I use. So, full disclosure, the last, I found another piece of cherry because this was kind of narrow. Uh, in my scrap bin and I cut it on the table saw because I already had this all put away and I wanted to make it a little bit wider because it kind of looked funny. Um, I'd still like to make it one more wider but I don't have any other scraps. But get your layout organized how you want to put it and we'll start gluing it up. Now this is cherry, poplar, poplar, oak, cherry, cherry, poplar, cherry, purple heart, cherry. You really don't want to use poplar for cutting boards but it'll work. I mean this is something that you can do and it's it's fine but one thing you'll want to do invest in a good set of clamps i'm using these like four-way squeeze clamps they're on amazon i will post a link below the video in the description they are 49 dollars for a pair of them and i cut them a little bit wider or longer rather <clears throat> so i can use them for tabletops what have you and I've actually finished the side, you can see some of the runs, and I put tape on them so none of the glue gets on these. It's easy to peel off. Probably don't even need the tape because I got a lot of finish on those. Now on the front and back, so right here, a little piece, and in the back, those are just calls. Those are not part of the board. They are just to prevent marring from these clamps, which I normally don't get anyway. But also, this board is a little bit more narrow. It's not as deep that I normally make my cutting boards. And these clamps are great, especially if you don't have a planer. They're kind of, in my opinion, a must have because they're gonna keep the boards as flat. So not only are you squeezing this way, you're squeezing down. So it's a four way clamp. It's squeezing it in both directions. That way you don't have any uneven boards. And since we built that sled, all these boards are about one inch thick. So we should have very minimal cleanup. Allow the board to set overnight. Do you get this bad boy looks like? Now this is why you put the tape down. That way it's not sticking to the board. But as I mentioned earlier, we'll show you these boards to tape off. Probably don't really need the tape. This is high gloss finish. The glue should not stick to that. But the tape, we can sand this off of the actual board. Now we've got the board out of the clamps. It's one nice solid piece. It is a mess though. We've got a lot of squeeze out, we've got tape. Now you can clean up some of the squeeze out as you're clamping it down with a damp cloth. It does save time, but you can also buy one of these scrapers. I love this thing. Um, you can get them at Woodcraft. I think I got this one from Amazon, I believe. If I did, I'll put a link below in the description uh, of the video here of this particular one. Actually, I'm pretty sure this came from Amazon. So then we can just start scraping off the glue. 
I finished all the scraping of the glue and as you can see some wood shavings. So I'm actually done with the scraper. We did both sides. I actually mounted it into my bench here just to make it more stable. You don't have to do that, but it's a nice option to have. Also, if you cut the board a little long, you can actually screw it to a table and then you can obviously cut off the ends that you screwed into. So there's that option as well. I'm going to move on to sanding. I'm going to use an orbital sander. And I would recommend you probably do the same. You can do this by hand. There is still some glue left, but it's going to take you forever. And you want a nice finish and the, the sander will just speed things up. Start with 100 grit instead of the 120. The surface is a little bit rough, so I'm going to smooth that out and then we'll go to the 120. Uh, I would normally start with 80 if I had some, but uh, I don't. So it's a little bit longer process, but it doesn't hurt to start out with a, a beefier grit and then work your way up. It's going to give you a better result in the end anyway. As you can see, it's already looking much better. Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and square off the ends of this board. Each of the ends, they need to be squared. They're not exactly square. And also, this is a good time to determine what you want your overall board length to be. I'm going to use a framing square and a circular saw to do so. And I'm going to cut off about a good inch and a half or so, eh, maybe a good inch. going to be the bottom half of my board and I knew this when I put it together there is some rot there a little bit there and we actually have a small split it's only at the bottom it's not on the top now normally I would take some glue mix it with some sawdust and fill in that little space but I'm going to actually use some of the Starbond brown medium we're going to fill this hole fill that crack and fill that crack and actually a little crack right there You obviously want to do this before a final sand. You can let it dry or you can use some of the Starbond activator and make it instant. There we go. Now obviously the mark is still there but it actually gives it character. There's no holes, no holes here, none there. And the split is actually completely gone. So now we're going to sand with 120, then we'll move up to 220. What I like to do is take a pencil and mark it all up. This way I know I'm actually getting an even sand. And I'm removing all the marks so I know I'm actually sanding some material. Now typically on cutting boards I like to round over the edges to give it a nice clean look. It also protects it a little bit. If it falls with a rounded edge, it's less likely to get like a big dent or at least be noticeable. If you got that hard edge, you're definitely going to notice it. And normally I would do that with my router table, but we're kind of talking about doing things in minimalist here. And ideally you would want to use uh, maybe a hand plane or even a hand sanding pad, but we're going to try it with the orbital sander. Really never done this, but uh, we're going to see how it works out. We're going to take our time because it is very easy to go too far. But we're just going to go back and forth. Let's see what it looks like. That is exactly what I was looking for. I'm surprised that worked out so well. We're going to try some hand sanding. This is a lot safer method. And especially on the corners, I'm going to round those over and I definitely don't want to use the orbital for that. We're going to just... Here's where we're at. We've got the corners rounded, we've got the edges sanded, everything's sanded to 220, but we're not really done with sanding yet, so don't stop here. A lot of people will skip this step. Next thing we want to do is we want to spray it with water. 
to raise the grain. Now, a lot of people say lightly mist it. I just give her. I'll soak this side and the edges, whole thing. I'll let this dry and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing. Once that water dries, you'll notice that it feels rough and what the water does is raises the grain. This way, we're gonna wet it now, we're gonna sand it, wet it again and sand it. That way when we actually apply our finish, it'll be super smooth and also, people are gonna get these wet. Now you don't wanna put these in the dishwasher by any means, but if you're cutting some steak or what have you, this'll not necessarily prevent, but it will help to prevent that grain raising so quickly. Now eventually it will, you'll have to refinish it. That's just, that's cutting board, so a wood cutting board in general. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this again with the 220. Once we're done sanding, we'll wet it again and then we'll do one more final sand. Okay, the moment of truth here. We're going to put on our mineral oil. You can also dunk them in there, which I do from time to time, but usually I just pour it on just a little bit that I need. Uh, dunking it, I don't think is really necessary, although it does, if you're batching a lot of these out, it will make it a lot faster. I'm thinking this is going to be the top. I, I really dig that because you can't see the glue. It almost looks hollow. It's pretty cool. Okay, I've got two coats of mineral oil on here. I applied the first coat, which you saw. I let that dry for about four hours or so. Not really necessary, but the board started to look a little bit dry. So then I applied a second coat and I let that dry overnight. And here's where we are at. Now I think we are definitely gonna go with this side as the top. I love that piece. So now we're gonna put some feet on here. I'm gonna use this little Craig tool. This is actually just like a little ruler that you can do 90 degrees and 45 and so on and so forth, but it's a great marking tool. You don't need this, not necessary, but it does, for me, make it a little bit easier for repeatable drilling, cuts, whatever you wanna use it for. Um, you can also just do it by eye, or you can actually make a little jig out of wood. I've done that before too. So I'm gonna drill some small pilot holes and we're gonna install our feet. Now that I have those holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and install the rubber feet. Now this is a completely optional step. Uh, a lot of people don't use them. I like to use them. Um, they kind of protect the board if you're on a flat surface and it's wet, you're not getting the board wet, it's lifting it up. It also gives you a way to actually lift up the board instead of it being flat on the table. You can also router in some finger grooves, but again, we're trying to do this kind of minimalist with just using a circular saw drill and uh, a, a sander. Okay, as a last step, I'm gonna add some beeswax. Again, this is another optional step. Don't need much. That should actually do the entire board. Just rub it in there real nice. This will offer even more protection. Has a nice smell to it. Cutting board is done, and I'm actually quite pleased with it. I make a lot of cutting boards. Usually I'm using the table saw, router, you know, all kinds of tools. I'm surprised it turned out this well just using the jig and the circular saw and some basic tools. I'm really happy with that. And it really did not take a whole lot longer. Uh, the, the most difficult or the hardest piece would be probably uh, the switching out the boards and the little jig just because with a table saw you can just zip them right through. And then of course the getting rid of the glue because I didn't use a planer or anything like that. Usually I would just run that right through the planer and be done in a few seconds. But still all in all it's something you could do in a couple hours, uh, you know, minus the dry time, maybe not even that. Uh, the longest wait is gonna be waiting for the glue to dry. It's just under an inch thick. I was gonna make it a little bit thicker, and then when I readjusted the jig, I realized I, I didn't have it quite where I wanted it. And that's fine, because it actually allowed me to get more pieces. If I would have made them a little bit over an inch, and after milling and everything, scraping them down, I would have not had, it wouldn't have been this wide. So that's another reason why I made it a little bit thinner so I can make it look more like a, a standard cutting board. I'm gonna go over the tools that we used and I will have Amazon links below the video in the description and everything I used here and also tell you what you absolutely need and what is optional. First of all, you need some scrap wood. And as mentioned earlier, this is cherry, poplar, poplar, oak, cherry, cherry, poplar, cherry, purple heart, and cherry. Normally I would not use poplar in a cutting board. Um, 
because it is a softer wood, but it's what I had as far as scrap that I wanted to use. I really didn't want to use the Purple Heart because I wanted it for another project, but I wanted to give it a little bit of uh, just, you know, some style, I guess. And it, it didn't turn out too bad at all, especially if you're selling these. I mean, you could, uh, a lot of people sell these just like this for, you know, $80, $100, believe it or not. I see them all the time on Etsy, Facebook Marketplace, uh, sometimes even more. Probably need to go a little bit thicker to get more, but I've seen boards just like this sell for at least $80. And a lot of them are just face grain. This is edge grain. Uh, that's, a, that's what makes this kind of unique with the circular solids. This is an actual edge grain board. Not end grain, but edge grain. End grain would be uh, probably a nightmare with a circular saw. Aside from the scrap wood, that's not a tool. These are things you absolutely need. Need some wood glue? I would definitely recommend Tight Bond 3. It says it's waterproof. I think it's more water resistant, but we'll let them go with that. It is water cleanup. It's uh, what I use on every cutting board. You'll definitely need the circular saw. And I'll post a link to just uh, one of the lower price circular saws in the links below. That's a Milwaukee, but that's their low end model. And it's not a very good one. You can find a, a win or something else corded that probably works better. And you definitely need some clamps. Now, I'll post a link to these ones I used in the video. They are $49.99 a pair. So they aren't the cheapest, but to do a, a board of this size, you would want to have at least three clamps this way. And then probably one to two, or probably four more to flatten it out. So you're talking, you know, about seven clamps, you're gonna spend probably $49. That you could do in just two. I did put a one in the center. It wasn't necessary, but those clamps not only squeeze it together, they, they flatten it out. So that'll make your life a lot easier, especially if you don't have a planer, is getting something like that. Because we didn't have to really flatten much out. Now, if you recall, the Purple Heart was a little cattywampus, but that was the only one. So those are the, those are the tools you really, really need. The sandpaper, the glue, the clamps, and the saw. You have to have those. Make life easier, a scraper, which again, I got this from Amazon, a sander, which will make your life easier as well. Um, this is, I'm going to say, a requirement, actually. I should have uh, mineral oil, but you could, don't have to get a gallon jug. You can get it from your local uh, woodworks, woodcraft, whatever. You can get it from Kroger. You don't need to buy a gallon. Kroger has mineral oil, typically. Smaller little containers. Also not a requirement, but if you're horrible with a circular saw like I am, you'll want a carpenter's square. I would say this, this size is probably perfect for this project. You can use a smaller one, or you could just use some scrap wood. I mean, that's, that's not a big, big deal. Of course, a drill and some drill bits. Water, but I assume you're gonna have water. Got a little spray container here. The Starbond glue helps. This is not just for a woodworking project or cutting boards. This can be for multiple things. The activator and the glue, it's, it's a lifesaver. We took care of this and made it a, an actual highlight. So it's pretty awesome. Our rubber feet. Post links to those as well. Beeswax, that's a nice option. And a little Craig ruler is a nice option. And how could we forget? What you need for this video is you need to make your jig. And that didn't cost me anything. And cutting boards, they're not the most difficult, but again, just, uh, Going through the YouTube videos, I even searched. I had never seen anybody do a, a cutting board, or especially an edge grain cutting board, using a circular saw. And I thought, let's see if we can make this work. But it's kind of fun just to see if, uh, you know, let's say I didn't have the, the tools that I have, that I could still make some nice things. And that's kind of what this is all about. Not everybody uh, has the funds or the means or the or the, the space, or you may be, you know, a, a teenager just getting started out and you're not sure if you like woodworking yet. And, you know, circular saw is definitely the right way to, to get started. I think that's gonna wrap it up. I will post the links to all the tools that we use in this video. Not these particular tools, but more reasonably priced tools. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. 
And as always, thanks for watching.